Israeli citizen has been kidnapped in Ethiopia for ransom. This according to a report received by the Department for Israelis in Distress at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs late last night. The 79-year-old man abducted from the Gundar region in northern Ethiopia was reportedly on a trip there when he was taken by his captors, who are demanding $9,000 for his release. According to reports, the background is thought to be criminal. This marks the second Israeli to be kidnapped in a matter of months. Israeli-Russian citizen Elizabeth Tsolkov is being held hostage by the Shia militia Khatib Hezbollah in Iraq. The Department for Israelis Abroad is in contact with his family and working with Interpol to safeguard the man's safe release. In a rare move, Palestinian Authority President Mahmoud Abbas heads the West Bank city of Jenin today, just over a week after a two-day Israeli army raid there. It's his first visit to the northern West Bank city in over a decade, a sign of his waning influence in a divided territory. Abbas is trying to regain influence after outward displays, anger and hostilities towards the PA during the Israeli insurgent. Abbas is set to meet with local residents and officials with the intention of rebuilding the city where over 23,000 people reportedly still lack access to water. He will also lay a wreath at graves of those killed. Netanyahu, meanwhile, on Sunday, reiterating Israeli support for the PA and vowing to help stabilize the situation in Palestinian territories. And the White House envoy met Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu today over regional issues, including talks with Saudi Arabia and tensions over Hezbollah's post on Israeli territory in the north. Two days after President Biden says ties between Israel and Saudi Arabia were, quote, very far away, the Israeli Prime Minister was reportedly informed about normalization talks with the kingdom. The last visit was undertaken in secrecy, and Amos Hochstein was accompanied by Israeli ambassador to the U.S., Mike Herzog. So we know the news is volatile and fast-paced, and we want to let you know that ILTV's new app is now available. So if you want to stay connected to the latest news from Israel, the Middle East, and the Jewish world, download our app now on all your devices. It's available in the App Store for both Android and iPhone.